أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم ذلكم <تصفيق> But actually, I have left it due to a reason. I'll be speaking, inshallah, next Friday at this very time on this subject, Battle of Badr. The, the circumstances which led to it, what were the factors, because that is a full subject in itself. And some of the biographers of the Prophet ﷺ have committed blunders regarding this due to their apologetic, you know, attitude towards the West. So they, that has to be cleared. So I have kept that for that speech, inshallah, and it will be included in this, you know, this, this record also. So that the, that background, you know, will become clear, inshallah. But we are just, you know, this rapid translation, you know, we can't devote much time to this. Ya yuhaladhi namanu intattaku another thing. Inshallah next Friday, the coming Friday, after this lecture on Badr, we shall have a full session of questions and answers. Because many brothers have said, you know, that there must be some time. So you keep your questions and, you know, in written forms, they must be there, and we shall have a full session, inshallah. One or two hours. Ya ayyuhaladhi namanu inta taqullaha yaj'al lakum furqana. Oh, you who believe, if you, have, if you have real taqwa of Allah, He will give you a criterion. Criterion in your hearts, which will tell you what is wrong, what is correct, what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad. The same thing has been given by Prophet ﷺ in some of his hadith. You must ask your heart. Because this heart, this soul within a moment, if the nature has not been perverted, this human soul is actually a divine spark. It's a divine light. It's a divine light. So actually, you have that spark within you, this heart. This is conscience, your conscience. So now if you have taqwa, this conscience is very active. It will tell you at every place, at every time, every minute, this is wrong, this is correct. But you kafir ankum sayyatikum, and he will acquit you of your bad deeds. If there are any, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will acquit you from them. And also pardon you and forgive you. Wallahu dhul fadlil azim and Allah is of infinite bounty. Wa is yamkuru bika alladheena kafaroo la yusbetuka au yaktuluka au yukhrijuk. And yes, recall, O Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when these unbelievers, these kuffar of Mecca, these chieftains of the different clans of the tribe of Quraysh, they were conspiring. They were having consultation among them. What to do about this Mines? According to them, it was the Mines. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his new deen, which has challenged our old 
creed and beliefs, everything, our customs, and who is challenging our system. So, what to, how to deal with it? So, there were three alternatives which were discussed. They used Metuka to imprison you, or Yaktuluka, or kill you, slay you, or Yukhrijuka, or you send them, expel you out from their territory. Three alternatives were being thought over, and the final was, which was proposed by Abu Jahl. One young man from every house, from every clan of the tribe of Quraysh, at midnight they should go and they should, you know, attack as one body and kill Muhammad so that it becomes impossible to say who killed him. At night, go and ambush, kill him, so that their family, the family of Muhammad Sallallahu will not be able to take the revenge from, from anybody because it will be impossible to say who has killed him. They were also planning and Allah was also planning. And Allah is the best of the planners. Their plan went to ruins. And the plan of Allah triumphed. Now these are some of the incidents which actually occurred during the Makki period. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only referring to them now here. What was there? Because this incident also, when they were planning and they were consulting each other what to do, how to get rid of this menace according to him, in the same way, when our revelations were recited unto them, they used to say, oh, we have heard it. Oh, we have heard it so many times. It's nothing new. If we also decide, we can compose such, you know, compositions. Although never dared to accept the challenge of Quran. None of them ever dared to accept this challenge and present some composition and, and, and you know, claim that this is equal to Quran in its literary beauty. But, you know, they, they could have said so. We have heard many a time these things, you know. And if we wish, we can also compose such things. In the in Satirul it's nothing except the fables and stories of the ancients. And just recall when they used to say, Oh Allah, O oh our Lord, if this is the truth from you, what Muhammad is claiming, what Muhammad is saying, if this is really the truth from you, send a rain over us, rain of stones. Minas Sama from the heaven. Why did they say so? I told you, they had to control their common people, which we call today in, in the current idiom the silent majority. There are the leaders and the silent majority. Now, the silent majority, if it went in favor of Muhammad, sallam, their position was threatened undermined their, you know, position was based on the support from the common people. So they had to convince people that our leaders, they are sincere. They actually don't think that Muhammad is prophet of Allah. Had they thought it, they would have accepted and they would have, you know, have the faith. They are sincere because they are saying, oh Allah, if it is correct, Send down upon us the punishment from the heavens. Send the rain of stones on us. Only to show off to the people that we are absolutely sincere. We do think that it is falsehood which Muhammad is presenting, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
Nauzu billahi bin zalik. So that was actually to convince and impress upon the common people. وَإِسْقَالُ اللَّهُمَّ إِنْ كَانَ هَذَا هُوَ الْحَقَّ مِنْ إِنْدِكْ فَامْتِرَ عَلَيْنَا هِجَارَةً مِنَ السَّمَاءَ وِئْتِنَا بِعَذَابِ النَّلِيمَ Or any other form of painful punishment. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لَيُعَذِّبَهُ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ This is very important ayah. And it was not for Allah. It was not befitting for Allah to send the punishment to them while you were among them. You were still at Makkah. If that rain would have come, you and the Muslims and the Mormons at Makkah, they would have also been involved in it. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ And Allah was not going to punish them when they were asking for His forgiveness. Now, what is the meaning of this? Who were they who were asking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There are so many opinions. But what I think is that because, you know, in Mecca, there were Muslims also. Although they were not in majority, maybe minority, but quite a big number of the Muslims were there. They were doing istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were asking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what happened? What was the basic difference? In case of Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, even after 950 years, he couldn't have except a few, very little number of people who came to believe in him. <coughs> the same story was repeated with Hazrat Ehud, the same with Hazrat Saleh, but this was not the case with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa <coughs> Makkah didn't reject him totally. After all, who was Abu Bakr? Who was Usman? Who was Umar? Who was Hamza? Who was Abdul Rahman ibn Auf? Who was Talha? Who was Zubair? Who was Sa Sa'id ibn Zaid? They were the sons of Bakka and a host of the other Muslims. So it was a mixed reaction, not a total rejection. So that is absolutely different. So in this mixed society, number one, they were also, you know, calling Talbiya. Talbiya, you know, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, Labbaik Allah Sharik Allah Labbaik. But they added you to which some words, Illa Sharikan Tablekuhu wa Mamalak. But they were saying, so actually, that, you know, asking for forgiveness, that was among them also. And number two, there were Muslims there who were asking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So unless, you know, this was sifted, Muslims were taken out, and the unbelievers remained at Makkah, the punishment couldn't come. So that is the meaning of this ayah. They were calling, praying. Abu Jahl was saying, send us, send over us the punishment if Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is true. If he's really your messenger, then you don't spare us. Send down upon us a rain of, of stones. But, but now the things have changed. Muslims have come out. You, O Prophet, have come out from Makkah. Now the things have changed. At that time, the situation was different. Now they don't have any claim that Allah shouldn't send any torment or any azab on them. What is it for them that can now save them from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? وَهُمْ يَسُدُّونَ عَنِ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ And they are stopping the Muslims from Masjid al-Haram. They can't go to the Masjid al-Haram to perform Umrah. They are now forbidden to go out there. وَمَا كَانُوا أَوْلِيَا And they were not the custodians. These, these Quraysh, these Kuffar, these Mushrikeen, they are not the custodians of Kaaba. They are not the custodians of the Baitullah. In awliyahu illa al-muttaqoon. Only the God-fearing people, only those who believe in Allah, in His unity, in His attributes, only those who have the regard for Him, who love Him, only they. In awliyahu illa al-muttaqoon. Walakin aksarahum la ya'lamoon. But most of them, they don't know it. وَمَا كَانَ صَلَاتُهُ مِنْ دَلْبَيْتِ إِلَّا مُقَامُ وَتَسْدِيَا now, as I told you, they claim that we are the followers of Ibrahim. So, they claim that we also pray. 
they were making tawaf, circling the ablation round, round the Kaaba. That was going on. They were performing Hajj. Only they had added something bad to all these things. So in the same way, the Salah, the prayer of Ibrahim alayhi salam had been distorted. And distorted to what extent? وَمَا كَانَ صَلَاةُ مِنْ الْبَيْتِ إِلَّا مُقَامْ وَتَسْدِيَةً Now their prayer near the bait of Allah, near the house of Allah, is nothing but whistling and clapping of hands. Clapping of hands and whistling and so on. And making tawaf, this is their salah. فَزُوقُ الْعَذَابَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْفَرُونَ So now taste this punishment and chastisement. Due to what? Because you were denying, you were rejecting. You rejected the call of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ لَيَسُدُّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ When this army of 1,000 people came, much was needed in funds also to raise that army. The provisions, they must have the provisions for the army, the arms and so on, to equip the army. Because there were no standing armies there. It was not the Byzantine Empire or the Persian Empire where they had the standing armies of thousands and thousands and lakhs and lakhs, hundreds of thousands. Yeah, there is a volunteer, volunteer army from Makkah. So when, you know, they decided to raise an army, they needed funds. And people contributed generously. And this ayah refers to this. In the Nadina Kafaru, you'll say, Unam Walahum, these people who disbelieve, who have committed kufr, they are spending their money, their wealth. They are suddu and sabirillah. What for? To stop people from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look to them. They are also spending. Just as the Muslims were spending for the cause of Allah, for the cause of deen. To establish the deen of Allah, they were also spending. They were also making sacrifices. They were also risking their lives. Fasayunfiqunaha. They will go on doing this. This is a prophecy which came to be true. Expeditions after expeditions, attacks after attacks. They were continuing. And definitely they were spending for that. Fasayunfiqunaha summa takunu alayhim hasratan. So until that will become, you know, a regret upon them. We spent our money also. But what, what was the result? We were overpowered. We were conquered by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, they will be overpowered. They will be overcome. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمَ يُحْشَرُونَ And the real punishment is that these unbelievers will be gathered towards Jahannam, towards the fire of hell. لَيَمِيذَ اللَّهُ الْخَبِيثَ مِنَ الطَّيِّبِ Again, very important. This is because Allah wants to discriminate the good from the bad, the wicked from the good, sifting. Because at Makkah, you were, you know, mixed. Muslims were there and the kuffars were there. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the door of Hijra. Muslims were separated. So sifting had been done. Now this side and that side, absolutely clear. لِيَمِيذَ اللَّهُ الْخَبِيثَ مِنَ الطَّيِّبِ وَيَجْعَلَ الْخَبِيثَ بَعْضَهُ عَلَىٰ بَعْضِ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ فَيَرْكُمَهُ فَجَمِيًّا فَيَجْعَلَهُ فِي جَهَنَّمِ And then you know to take that foul and wicked thing and stack it one over the other, make it a heap and then as a whole throw them into the fire of hell. وَيَجْعَلَ الْخَبِيثَ بَعْضَ وَلَا بَعْضٍ Stacking one over the other. فَيَرْكُمَهُ And gathering them, making them into a heap. فَيَجْعَلَهُ فِي جَهَنَّمْ And then throwing that heap into the fire of hell. أُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ Definitely, they are the losers. Losers in this world as well as losers in the hereafter. قُلْ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِنْ يَنْتَهُوا يُغْفَرْ لَهُمْ مَا قَدْ صَرَفْ This is the last chance which is being given to the Quraysh of Makkah, the unbelievers who rejected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
قُلِّلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, say to these people who have disbelieved, who have rejected your call of Iman. إِنْ يَنْتَهُوا If they stop here, if they desist, if they change their attitude, يُغْفَرُوا لَهُمْ مَا قَدْ صَلَفُ Then what has passed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them. Even now if they come to believe, if we accept you as the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will just condone whatever has happened in the past. وَإِنْ يَعُودُوا فَقَدْ مَضَدْ سُنَّةُ الْأَوَّلِينَ But if they repeat what they have been doing, then you know the examples of the ancients have already passed. They know what happened to Aad and they know what happened to Samud and they must know what happened to Fir'aun and his army and his chiefs. Those examples have passed. They will be added to the list of those examples, that's all. But even now, if they believe, if they accept Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if they embrace Islam, if they enter the deen of Allah, يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them their past deeds. Now the address to the people who believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is also one of the very important and permanently relevant ayah of the Qur'an. وَقَاتِلُوهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتْنَةٌ وَيَكُونَ الدِّينُ كُلُّهُ لِلَّهِ O Muslims, now that the final phase of the revolutionary struggle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has started. This is the beginning, as you call it, this is the beginning of the end. This is the final phase of the struggle. Dawa, number one. Training the people, purifying their souls. Number two. Organizing them into a party. Hezbollah, number three. Passive resistance. Taking all persecution without any retaliation. For twelve long years, these four things were going on, going on, going on, going on. Calling, preaching, whosoever accepted came to the fold of Islam, purification of their souls, yazakkihim, organizing them into a party, disciplined. Fasma'u ati'u, bayana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala sam'i wa ta'at, we he pledged ourselves to the Prophet of Allah, that we shall listen and obey. عَلَى السَّمِي وَالطَّعْهِ فِي الْعُسْرِ وَالْيُسْرِ وَالْمَنْشَةِ وَالْمَقْرِهِ وَعَلَى عَصَرَةٍ عَلَيْنَا وَعَلَى اللَّانُ وَعَلَى اللَّانُ جَادِ أَهْلَ الْأَمْرِ So all these things you know. And then, no retaliation for 12 long years. These four things that Lama Iqbal has added together into one, you know, one sentence of his couplet. Ba nashay darveshi dar saazo dama dam zan. This is all darveshi. People calling you names, or you are not replying, you are praying for them. People throwing stones on you, you presenting flowers to them. This is darveshi. No retaliation. Dawa. Dawa, tarbiyah, tanzeem, and sabr. Take everything with patience, without any retaliation. Ismiru, have patience. Ismiru yara yasir, fa'inna ma'idakum al-jannah. But now the fifth stage, the active resistance, and now the sixth and the final, the armed conflict has begun. Now it must continue. Qatiluhum hatta la takuna fitnatun. Till that time, that all persecution finishes up. وَيَكُونَ دِينُ كُلُّهُ لِلَّهِ And the deen, the system, it should become totally for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No division of the system. أَلَّا دِينَ فَرَّقُوا دِينَهُمْ We have read that ayah. The way the system is one. The whole life, all aspects of human life, collective as well as individual, should come under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are two things. Whenever you are a truly believing Mu'min, 
He is in the environment and circumstances where the deen of Allah is not established. So he finds difficulty to practice the deen. The environment is not, you know, cooperating with him. And this is fitna. This is trial. You can't practice your deen. You can say prayers. But you can't establish the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't chop off the hands of the thieves. Can you? That means you are not enforcing the deen of Allah. You are acting upon the deen of Allah only partially. So these two things, persecution should come to an end, number one. A Muslim should be able to have his deen as a whole, organic whole, not a part of it. And this whole deen should become under Allah. His command, his sovereignty, kingdom of heaven and earth. To establish that kingdom of Allah on earth, the rule of Allah on earth, or according to the biblical terminology, kingdom of heaven on earth. Now this phase, final phase of armed conflict has started and it should continue. The final goal is that the deen of Allah be established in totality. وَقَاتِلُهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتْنَةٌ وَيَكُونَ الدِّينُ كُلُّهُ لِلَّهِ فَإِنْ اِنْتَهَوْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِمَا يَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرًا If they stop, if they don't resist, they desist from opposing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing what they are doing. It means now you also stop. If the deen is, has become dominant, well if they want to live as Christians or Jews, they can live. But the deen will be dominant. Dominant deen will be of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What happened, you know, 50 years back in the Indian subcontinent? The deen belonged to whom? The Britishers. Whose law was enforced? <coughs> Who were the rulers? So deen was for them. And for us was only a freedom. You can pray, go to the mosques. You can keep fast during Ramadan, but the law will be British law. Will you be governed by sword or by pen? Do you remember this word? So what was the deen? Deen was of Britishers. Only religion we could practice in the limited sphere. You can have anything as beliefs, your dogma, your modes of worship, you can have them. That is why, you know, Allah, Allah my Iqbal, in a very sarcastic andaz, sarcastic style, he said, Mullah ko jo hai hind mein sajde ki ijazat, nada ye samajta hai ke Islam hai azad. Because Mullah is free to pray to Allah, go to mosque, say the azan. He thinks mistakenly that Islam is azad, Islam is not azad, Islam is in chains. Islam is dominated by the Britishers. The real domination is for the Britishers. In the same way, everywhere, sovereignty belongs to the masses. The majority will decide the rule. Whatever they decide, that will be the law of the land. So it's not the rule of Allah. Nowhere in Muslim world also, except a few exceptions I don't want to go into detail. Anyhow, this is the goal set for the Muslim Ummah for all times to come. But it is essential, and that is going to be the subject of my talk tomorrow, inshallah, after Zohar. This, you know, Ketal, which is the final stage, it comes, you know, after some prerequisites have been fulfilled. Without fulfilling those prerequisites, if you go to war, you are fool. And this point actually is most misunderstood by the Muslims of today. What are those prerequisites? What was the basic methodology of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? So today, even if there will be a movement, a struggle, in the footsteps of the struggle of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, first of all, you have to pass through those four stages: dawa, taskiya, and tarbiya, then tanzim, then passive resistance. Active resistance, and then if there is, you know, field, and if there is possibility and feasibility, go to war. 
or if the, it is not feasible, what is the alternative? This I am going to discuss tomorrow, inshallah, after Zohar. Anyhow, this is the goal set for the Muslim Ummah. This was not only for the Sahaba, for the days of the Prophet Sallallahu As I told you, these are a universal and eternal principles of Islam. If the deen of Allah is not established, it is fitna. It is rebellion against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This world belongs to Him. This earth belongs to Him. He is the rightful ruler. Whosoever is ruling is in revolt against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whosoever is faithful to Allah, he must fight him out. And if he doesn't, he is not sincere with Allah. He is not faithful with Allah. But how to fight out? What is the methodology? That is a different thing. But this must be understood, that this is the goal. Islam is not a religion in the common sense of the, of the word. It's a deen, it's a whole system of life. And the system of life is that which is established, established actually. Not which you can read in the books, or you can only profess through your tongue. This ayah actually appeared first in Surah Al-Baqarah. Here one word has been added. Just remember, in the 24th section of Surah Al-Baqarah, وَقَاتِلُوهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتْنَةٌ وَيَكُونَ دِينُ لِلَّهِ Here it has been intensified more. قَاتِلُوهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتْنَةٌ وَيَكُونَ دِينُ كُلُّهُ لِلَّهِ No exception. Even if one aspect of human life is outside the deen of Allah, this is not the total... Establishment of the deen of Allah. Our religion, Islam, is not only a private affair of the individuals. It's a total system. Kulluhu. As one whole, organic whole. The whole system. The total political, socio economic system. That has to be governed by the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the goal. And this should be the goal of every truly believing Muslim. وَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ بَعْلَاكُمْ نِعْمَ الْمَوْلَى وَنِعْمَ النَّسِيرِ If they turn away, then you, O Muslims, rest assured, be it known to you, Allah is your friend, Allah is your supporter, don't fear them. وَنِعْمَ الْمَوْلَى وَنِعْمَ النَّسِيرِ How an excellent protector and how excellent a helper he is. وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ مَا غَنِمْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَأَنَّ لِلَّهِ خُمُسَهُ now you know, in the beginning it was said, this is the repetition of that subject now. And this is the style of the Qur'an. While composing this surah, the most important ayah or, or issue is taken in the beginning. So this surah began with, يَسَلُونَ قَالِنَ fal Because this was the most sensitive issue. After the victory of Badr, you know, how to divide them, what to do with them, these spoils, this booty, a lot of it, how to distribute it. So there's the first answer was given, very categorical. All these belong to Allah and His Messenger. You just wash off your hands and go and sit. So that when, if something is given, it will appear to be very valuable. First of all, it belongs to Allah and Rasul. You have no right in it, no share. But now the law, which is permanent law. Balamu annama ganimtum min shayin. May it be known to you that whatever you have as spoils of war, a booty, fa'anna lillahi khumusahu. For Allah, wali rasul, and his messenger, only one fifth will be reserved. And this will be spent on what? فَلِلَّهِ وَلِلْرَسُولِ فَأَنَّ لِلَّهِ خُمُسَهُ وَلِلْرَسُولِ وَلِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ These are to be spent. Now number one. You know the expenses of the Prophet ﷺ himself. He was not getting any salary. Was he? He was not being paid. He was not doing any business now. Till such time that he was at Makkah, you know, the wealth of Khadija, radiyallahu ta'ala anha, 
was going. It was quite a lot. But after Hijra, what? That is why many a nights he and his family had to go without any food. You have it, all these things in the Ahadith, in the Sira. But now Allah has opened a way. Except that somebody, you know, came and presented something. He didn't take any zakah, any sadaqat, but gifts, presents, they could be accepted. Whatever a Muslim presented, okay. Even out of it he used to spend for others. There were, you know, a sahaba sofa sitting outside. So he was going, he and his family going for many times together without any food, meals, without any food. But now, a definite source. <laughs> now his expenses, out of this one-fifth, one is Il-Qurba and his relatives. His relatives, this Il-Qurba. Because he is also a human being, he has his relations, not only his personal, but his relatives. Waliyatama. And now the orphans for the general, you know, society. Wal Masakin and the destitutes, the poor, Babni Sabil, and the travelers. In Kuntum Amantum Billahi wa Mandana Allah Abdina. If you actually have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you must accept this. One fifth reserved for this. Four fifths will be distributed. That detail has not been given here. We know it from the Hadith and Sirah. Double share was for the mounted. Whosoever had a camel or a horse also, his share was double. Because he was feeding him, feeding it. There were no regular supply lines and, you know, no rations, or no, nothing of the sort. So whosoever was mounted was looking after the, the animal himself. So he should get double. And, you know, the foot soldiers... They will get single. That was the rule decided. Although you might not have gathered anything, you know, if you were standing on guard somewhere, you were not, you had not taken any part in the actual combat. You are not the combatant, but you will also be given a part. It's a collective thing that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has given you, not your personal efforts. So one fifth will be reserved, and the four fifth will be decided. And if you believe in what we sent down on our bondsman, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Yawm al-Furqan, on the day of criterion. Now these words of Abu Jahl are thrown back on them. He said it is going to be Yawm al-Furqan and we did make it Yawm al-Furqan. This is Yawm al-Furqan. Yawm al-Taqal Jam'an, the day when the two hosts, the two armies, they met each other. وَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا يَوْمَ الْفُرْقَانِ يَوْمَ الْتَقَلْ جَمْعَانِ وَاللَّهُ وَلَا كُلِّ شَيْنْ قَدِيرٌ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has power over everything. إِذْ أَنْتُمْ بِالْعُدْوَةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ بِالْعُدْوَةِ الْقُسْوَةِ Now this valley, Badr is a valley, a broad valley, and at both the ends, north and south, it narrows down into a, into a very narrow alley of mountains, mountains to this side, mountains to that side. The usual caravan route passed through this valley. When coming from Mecca, they entered the southern end of the valley, and then when they proceeded for north, from northern end. So this, these are the two ends. And the road which goes to Medina is also near the, the northern end. So now the Prophet and his companions, they came from Medina. So they were at the, the closer, which was more closer to Medina, nearer to Medina, on that end of the valley. Is Antum Bilud, but it's Dunya. Dunya is the feminine of Adna. Adna is nearer. Dunya is the feminine. The nearer corner of the valley you reach there. Wahum Bilud, but Qusva. And they, at the farther end, they were presented there. وَرَّقْبَوْ أَسْفَلَ minkum, And the caravan was beneath you. What does it mean? Actually, what Abu Sufyan did, when he was returning with that caravan, which had a lot of merchandise with it, 
Number one, he sent an SOS message to Makkah. I fear an attack from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So send and help. Secondly, he changed his route. He didn't enter the valley of Badr. He passed by the coast of the Red Sea. Because now the Red Sea coast was at a lower level. So that is why Allah is saying they were beneath you. You were at a higher place. It's a mountainous region. You were higher. He didn't take this route at all. He just bypassed the Badr Valley of Badr and he went near the coast, along the coast. وَرَّكْبُ أَسْفَلَ مِنْكُمْ وَلَوْ تَوَادْتُمْ لَخْتَلَفْتُمْ فِي الْمِعَادِ And had you made an, a mutual agreement of meeting at one place, you must have committed something, mistake, and you would, you would have differed in the time. But at the, at the same time, they came and Muhammad Sassalam reached here. It was only three days journey of Badr from Medina. Ten days from Makkah. But Allah planned it in a way that they reached the, the valley absolutely simultaneously. Had you decided mutually that we shall meet at the Badr of, on such and such date, you might have differed due to any circumstances. There could be delay of your arrival in, the, in, in this valley or the arrival of the, the Quraysh might have been delayed. But because Allah wanted to accomplish and to show this Al-Furqan to the whole of Arabian Peninsula, people of all the Arabian Peninsula, that Allah is with them, Allah is with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He wanted to make it Yom Al-Furqan, so he decided that you and they both reached Badr simultaneously. إِذْ أَنْتُمْ بِالْعُدْوَةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ بِالْعُدْوَةِ الْقُسْوَى وَالرَّكْبُ أَسْوَلَ مِنْكُمْ وَلَوْ تَوَعَدْتُمْ لَخْتَلَفْتُمْ فِي الْبِعَادِ وَلَاكِنْ لَيَخْزِيَ اللَّهُ أَمْرًا كَانَ مَفْعُولًا But this was so that a matter is accomplished fully, which was to be accomplished. The will of Allah had to be fulfilled. لَيَحْلِكَ مَنْ هَلَكَانْ بَيَّنَةٍ So that now when it has become clear, it is Furqan. Haq and Batil are discriminated, totally differentiated for the whole of the Arabian Peninsula. The يَحْلِكَ مَنْ هَلَكَانْ بَيَّنَةٍ Now whosoever has to die, he should die after this clear sign. Not in doubt. وَيَحْيَا مَنْ حَيَّا بَيَّنَةٍ And whosoever wants to live spiritually, he should live with a clear sign. That this is the sign of Allah, this is Al-Furqan, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has showed, that Muhammad and his companions are on the right path, and these people of Makkah are on the wrong path. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَسَمِيُّونَ عَلِيمٌ Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Sami, all hearing, and Alim, all knowing. إِذْ يُرِيكَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنَانِكَ قَلِيلًا Recall when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was showing to you, O Muhammad, in your dream, the enemy as small. But now, there can be an objection. Was the dream of Muhammad false or wrong? And the dream of a prophet cannot be false, cannot be wrong. What does it mean? You know, one is apparent strength and one is the real strength. The real strength of that army was very small. Why? Because most of them who were forced to come there due to their chieftains, in their hearts of hearts they believed that Muhammad was on the right path. They knew who was Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa They knew who are his companions, Abu Bakr Siddiq, a person like him, Osman, a person like him. These people, you know, morally, Character-wise, their personalities, the silent majority knows everything. They remain silent because of lack of courage. They can't say it out. They can't stand, take the courage of standing and saying to the chiefs, you know, people at the helm of affairs, you are wrong. They are silent. But although they are silent, they are not blind. They see. They knew the difference between Muhammad and Abu Jahl. Who Abu Jahl is? What is his character? What is his personality? And who Muhammad is? What is his character? So they knew it. So actually, their, their 
urge to fight. That was not strong. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him the real, the real strength, you know. The apparent strength was something else. One thousand marching with drums beating and everything and you pomp and show and all the, all the show, you know, there. But the real strength, the heart to fight. If you think you are on the right path, your strength is something else. If you think you are fighting for the right cause, for the just cause, your strength is something else. And if you are self-defeated within your own conscience, well, I am not going for the correct cause. I have to go. Because this Abu Jahl, you know, he, he wants me to go. There's something else, sort of mercenaries. So Allah showed to the Prophet ﷺ that the real strength, you know, is very little. Is yurika hum Allah fi manami ka qalilun, walau araka hum kasiran la fashil tum. Had he shown to you that they are very large in number, la fashil tum, oh Muslims, you would have lost courage. Wala tanazatum fil amr, you must have quarreled about the matter, whether we should fight or not, whether we should, you know, avoid the, this combat or not. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ سَلَّمْ But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you. إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاكِ السُّدُورِ He very well knows whatever is there in the hearts of the people. وَيُرِيكُمُوهُمْ إِذُ الْتَقَيْتُمْ فِي آيُنِكُمْ قَلِيلًا Not only to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Allah made this army of Quraysh little in the eyes of the Muslims also. Although they were 313, but you know, as if they saw, they are not very, very many in number. That was also a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is yurika humuhum, is iltaqaytum fi ayunukum qaleena, wa yukallilakum fi ayunahim. And he had belittled you also in their eyes. Why? Because Allah wanted that there should be the combat. لَيَقْضِيَ اللَّهُ أَمْرًا كَانَ مَفْعُولًا Nobody should go away now. Fighting should take place. That was the decision of Allah. Allah wanted to make it Yawm al-Furqan. وَإِلَى اللَّهِ تُرْجَعُ الْأُمُورِ And to Allah return all the matters for final decision. Nothing can happen without His permission. Everything is referred to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا لَقِيتُمْ فِيَةً فَاسْبُتُوا Oh, you who believe, when you have to meet a host of the army, an army of the enemy. First go to be firm, stand firm. Was Allah kasiran, and remember Allah. Continue zikr of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to the maximum. Dalakun tuflehun, so that you may triumph. Wa tiyu Allah wa Rasulahu, and obey Allah and His Messenger. Wala tanazau, don't quarrel with each other. Fat tafshalu. Then you will definitely, if there is difference of opinion and this, you know, this dragging and of the proposals and pushing the proposal and going on, discussing these things and those things, if you continue those things, fatafshalu, you will lose the courage. You will lose the courage. But tazhabari hokum, and your power will depart. Masbiru and have patience. In Allah Sabirin. What happened at Uhud one year later? There was a dispute. The Prophet had ordered fifty archers not to leave that place. But thirty five out of them disobeyed they disobeyed. Although they had, you know, justified. And I also think we shall read in but we have already discussed it in Surah Al Imran. They thought that the Prophet only meant in case of defeat, even if you see all of us killed and that the birds are eating our flesh, even then you don't move from here. So they are good. Now this is an absolutely different circumstances. We have got the victory. Why should we stay here now? But the local commander insisted, nothing doing, don't move. So they defied the local commander. And the saying of the Prophet is, مَنَ تَعَنِي فَقَدْ أَتَعَى اللَّهِ وَمَنْ عَسَانِي فَقَدْ أَسَى اللَّهِ وَمَنْ أَتَعَى أَمِيرِي فَقَدْ أَتَعَى أَنِي وَمَنْ عَسَى أَمِيرِي فَقَدْ أَسَى أَنِي 
whosoever obeys me, he obeys Allah. Whosoever disobeys me, he disobeys Allah. Whosoever obeys a person appointed by me, an Amir, appointed by me, he obeys me actually. And whosoever disobeys a person, an Amir appointed by, he, by me, he disobeys me actually. So that was a disobedience, a dispute. So that happened. لَقَدْ صَدَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَعَدَهُ اِسْتَحُسُونَهُ بِإِذْنِي حَتَّى اِذَا فَشِلْتُمْ وَتَنَازَاتُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ The same two words appear in that ayah of Surah Al-Ibran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had fulfilled His promise, had given you the victory. But when you disputed about the matter, and you وَعَسَيْتُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا عَرَاكُمْ تُحِبُّوا And if this is bad, then you know, we turn the tables on you. It was a punishment. Ya ayyuhal ladhin amanu iza laqeetum fiyatan fasbutu waskunu allaha kasir allaha lakum tuflihoon waafi'u allaha wa rasoolahu. Now these are also general instructions for all time to come. Whenever you will again try to establish the deen of Allah, the same circumstances will come. You will have to be in a party, Hezbollah, disciplined party. If you don't keep the discipline of the party, you will be the losers. If Allah didn't condone even the mistake of the Sahaba, 35 disobeyed. And as a punishment, 70 martyred. Even the Prophet injured, his teeth broken. Allah didn't condone your mistake. We have to give you the lesson so that you have you are careful in the future. So what will happen to us? If we don't care about the discipline, what will happen? Nothing will happen. What happened to these Afghan Mujahideen? Because they were not under one leader, one commander. They lost the fight that they had, that they had you know, victory over it. The turning point was Jalalabad. Because all the groups tried to take the credit of the victory of Jalalabad. There was a chaos. They were defeated. And that was the turning point. So that is important. Discipline. Listen and obey. The discipline of an army. There is not to reason why. There is but to do and die. Listen to your commanders. Your Amir. And you have to act upon it. Only if it is against the deen of Allah, it is haram, then you are allowed to, to disobey. So, Ya ayu aladhin amanu, atiyo, Ya ayu aladhin amanu, iza laqeetum fiyatan fasbutu, waskuru allaha kasiran la'allakum tuflihoon, wa atiyo allaha wa rasoola, wa la tanaza'u, fa tafshalu, wa tazhabari hukum, wasmiru, inna allaha ba'a sabirin. Verily, Allah is with, with those people who have patience and forbearance. That is, Allah, Allah's help is with them. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ خَرَجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ And don't be like those who came out of their homes. Now this is referring to the Quraysh, army of Quraysh. مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ بَطَرًا Boasting, boastfully. We are very strong. رِيَانَّاسِ Showing off to the people. This is our strength. We have this armor. This this is the number of, of camels we are taking with us. There will be our ration also. And we have 300 or 200 horsemen with us. But the purpose was to stop, to oppose that movement of Islam. Stop people from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu bima ya'maluna muhid. And Allah had already encircled what they were doing. They didn't know the unseen. What was the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They were going very much confident of their victory. Abu Jair was saying, it is going to be Yawul Furqan. They were so sure of their victory. Wallahu bima ya'maluna muhit. Allah had already encircled whatever they were doing. وَإِزَّيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ وَعَمَالَهُمْ And when Satan had made for them very beautiful and alluring and attractive what they were doing, وَقَالَ لَا غَالِبَ لَكُمُ الْيَوْمِ مِنَ النَّاسِ 
and he said to them, whispered to, to them in their minds, Alladhi yuvasvesu fi sudur in nas. La ghalib alakum ulyom. Today, nobody can beat you. Nobody can overcome you. Nobody can overpower you. Nobody can defeat you on this earth. Why ni jarun lakum? And I am also with you. I am your neighbor. I am standing with you. Falamma taratil fiyatan. And when the two armies saw each other, sighted each other, nakasala akabe, he turned back on his heels. Wakala inni bari ummin kum. And he said, I have nothing to do with you. Inni ara mala taran. I am seeing what you are not seeing. I am seeing the angels coming. How can I stand? You can't see them. I am seeing. Inni ara mala taran. I told you. The angels and these jinns, they are somewhat closer to each other because angels were created out of light and the jinns were created out of fire. These two things are very close to each other. Fire has a light in it. We humans, we have been created from the clay, the crust of this earth. So it's very inert. But you know, these two, and both of them are invisible to us. And both of them, angels as well as jinns, can take on any form. A jinn can appear before me as a human being. An angel also can appear before me as a human being. Many a times, Hazrat Jibreel wasalam, used to come to Muhammad wasalam, in human shape. And he took the features of Hazrat Dahya Kalbi, ta'ala, and he was a very handsome person from among the Companions of the Prophet So both have some proximity to each other. He saw that 1,000 strong army of angels is coming. In the ara ma'alataron, I am seeing what you are not seeing. In the akhafullah, wallahu shaliru niqab, I fear Allah. So he ran away and definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very severe in punishment. Is yaqulu al-munafiquna man lazina fi qulubihim maradun. Just recall when the hypocrites of Medina and those in whom hearts there was a disease. What do they mean? In whom hearts there was disease, that is, they were still at the first level of nifaq. It has not gone to the extreme. And there were some also in whom this nifaq was from the very beginning to the highest degree. Abdullah ibn Ubay, for example, he was from the very first day Munafiq. Why? Because actually, he was going to be proclaimed as king of Yasrib. These two tribes, Aus and Khadraj, they were very much weary of infighting between them. And they wanted, we should have some discipline, we should have some order here. So they had decided that they, shall de de they will declare Abdullah ibn Ubay as king of Madinah. Accept him as the king. And the crown was also, had been prepared. He was going to be crowned very soon. Coronation was to take place. And Muhammad came, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All his dreams, you know, they were shattered. But he could do nothing. Because most of the people of his own tribe, Khazraj, they also believed in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But what could he do? So he was... He had no option but to become a Muslim legally and then, you know, try his luck to be always in search of some occasion. So he was a total munafiq from the very beginning. But other people, you know, they were, some were only, you know, the, the disease was just in the first stage. Is yaqul al-munafiq, una wa nadhi rafi qulu bihim baradun, gharraha ulai dinum. To these people, that is the Muslims, the Mobins. Their deen has made them crazy. They have become fools. They are going to confront Quraysh. What a big folly. They have lost their brains. They have become crazy. Their deen, their belief has deceived them and made them gone crazy. وَمَنْ يَتَوَقَّلَ لَلَّهِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ They don't know that whosoever places his faith and confidence in Allah, Allah is Aziz, all-powerful, Hakim, all-wise. 
ولو ترى اذ يتوفى الذين كفروا الملائكه يضربون وجوههم اونلي اف يو كود سي وين دي ملائكه دي انجلز ويل بي تيكنج دي سولز اند لايف اوف ذيس بيپل يضربون وجوههم they will be smiting their faces and their, their backs and they will be saying now go and taste the punishment which, is, which will burn you this is what your own hands have said to you this is what your own hands have sent for you your own deeds and verily Allah is not cruel to the people. This is your own earning. You have done it. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zdik al-Hakim. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number, 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together, we can make a difference.